Oh, we're going to talk about the rings of the planets in this uh, particular video. And we can observe now, we know now, that uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune all have rings. So that is a common feature of the Jovian planets. There is a particular distance away from uh, the center of a planet that's important to know about. It's called the Roche limit. If you just have uh, two snowballs that are just barely touching each other and kind of uh, lightly stuck together, if they're inside the Roche limit, tidal forces will cause these snowballs to drift apart. If they're outside the Roche limit, then they can stick together. So we have a uh, tidal disruption effect that's present if objects are too close to a planet. Now, this does not prevent uh, astronauts from living in space, in a spacecraft. Those uh, are made of metal, they have mechanical strength to them, and the Roche limit effect does not uh, disrupt them, does not pull satellites apart. But little snowflakes, little pebbles that are lightly touching each other, um, their mutual gravity is not strong enough to prevent the tidal disruption uh, taking place inside the Roche limit. So that applies to rings. Now Saturn very obviously has a great ring system, very extensive. Uh, Galileo was able to see a bulge on each side of Saturn. His optics were not of good enough quality to see the rings in the uh, Cassini division, this black uh, band in the rings. But he could observe that it was not like the not like Jupiter was not a simple object. Um, in the later 1600s, the uh, uh, optics of telescopes became more advanced, and uh, Cassini was able to see this uh, division in the rings of Saturn. So the diameter of the rings is quite amazing, uh, over 160,000 miles for the extent of the rings, and that's more than halfway from the Earth to the Moon, so a fairly large distance. But the rings are only about 300 feet thick, only 300 feet thick. So you might ask yourself, why is that possible? Well, this uh, feature, this sort of pancake uh, nature of uh, rotating systems is common in the universe. We have the disks of spiral galaxies. We have the planetary systems that have their disks of material. And here we have ring systems. And if uh, objects are not orbiting around the equator of the planet here, let's take Saturn, uh, the little lumps of ice, that uh, millions of them orbiting Saturn. If they're not orbiting in a plane, if they're some are going up, some are coming down as they uh, engage in their orbits, they're going to be collisions. And the up-down motion is going to cancel off. Only the motion around the planet is going to survive as these objects collide. So we get a natural disk forming and the uh, direction of rotation of Saturn is the way it formed. And objects that try to go up or down through the disk suffer collisions and uh, get absorbed into the disk and cancel off the, the up and down type motions with the net collisions that occur. Um, so the rings photographed in more detail by the Cassini uh, spacecraft. Um, the B ring is the really bright, uh, broad one here. A ring on the outside and a C ring on the inside. But look at there's uh, material kind of bunched up in rings within rings of these rings that are present here. And you might ask yourself, why is there no ring material in this gap? Well, there's a moon of Saturn, Mimas, that uh, is further out here. If there was a little piece of icy rock in this band here, it turns out it would orbit twice for one orbit of Mimas. So it goes around twice, it comes to this position again, and here's this moon over here, influencing it by gravitational pull. So it pulls it away and gives it a little boost to get out of this uh, environment. So this is called a resonance when this uh, orbital period of this moon and the orbital period of this what would be in this gap in this uh, Cassini division when there's an integer relationship uh, so two orbits here for one orbit of the moon or there are other resonances that are uh, present for other moons you know three orbits in the uh, particular location versus one orbit of some outer moon or 
or four orbits in a particular location versus uh, three orbits for some outer moon in various scenarios that uh, a resonance, a gravitational resonance when the piece of ice gets to the same position near this outer moon it gets pulled repeatedly pulled and pulled and pulled and this resonance gives extra energy for that uh, that piece of rock and it goes moves to a different orbit the resonance effect is something you've experienced on a playground when you were in a swing and someone pushed you at regular intervals that build up your motion build up your energy and uh, same thing kind of happens here this regular pull of the gravity of this moon on a piece of rock that uh, somehow got orbiting in this gap position that repeated pull pulls the uh, piece of rock to a different place so we have these divisions these gaps in the ring system and one of the most famous ones is the Cassini division a very broad gap in the um, the ring system the rings themselves this is an artist view <laughs> and uh, just millions of little snowballs of uh, radar can be bounced off of the uh, of the rings of Saturn and it, it indicates very small objects uh, up to you know the size of a house in the uh, for the size of uh, objects that are orbiting here and they're uh, again icy objects maybe some rock covered with ice uh, but uh, from very particles, kind of sand type particle size up to very, not very many, but some the size of a house orbiting, uh, orbiting Saturn. Just in their individual orbits going around Saturn, millions upon millions of these little uh, uh, bits of uh, icy rock. Another view from the Cassini spacecraft, the sun's over to the left. And here's the shadow of Saturn giving uh, shade to the, uh, the ring system. And here the ring system giving shade to Saturn. Just another view in Cassini division, this broad dark area, rings A, B, and C. And Saturn, of course, has a equatorial plane to it. And when Saturn's rings are uh, in such a direction that the Earth is lined up with the plane of the rings, then we, we don't see the broad rings, and Saturn is not as fun to look at. We see this edge-on view of the rings. And here you see a shadow of the moon of Saturn. Um, but we have this situation occur periodically as uh, the Earth is in the plane of the rings. We get this uh, thin line view instead of uh, the rings uh, more uh, face-on. So that is Saturn. We have uh, uh, various moons of Saturn creating gaps in the ring system, but millions of particles. So in, I, I think it was 1977, I'm forgetting, but uh, astronomers wanted to study how the atmosphere of Uranus would dim starlight. So they were going to study an occultation, an occultation where the planet would cover up a star. And as the atmosphere covered up the star there would be a dimming of the light and astronomers were going to study the uh, uh, the speed that the light dimmed and try to get information on the atmosphere of Uranus. They set up their equipment and before the occultation they noticed the light dimmed and then it dimmed a sequence of times and then it dimmed another sequence of times then the main occultation occurred and they measured the star brightness afterwards and they saw these repeated dimmings of the star on the other side. So this was evidence that there was material orbiting Uranus, ring material. As we get kind of the same pattern of the number of blocks, uh, blockings of the light in a certain time interval, the same pattern as uh, the planet moved the ring system across here, and then as the planet keeps moving across the sky from our point of view, then the rings again blocked in kind of the same sequence uh, after the occultation took place. Then uh, later equipment, the Hubble telescope in the 1990s, uh, 1998 here, uh, has the ability to uh, photograph the rings of, of Uranus and they were photographed by spacecraft, the Voyager spacecraft going by uh, Uranus as well. Um, so here's the view from Voyager. Again, these rings of planets are not solid. Uh, 
Doppler effect can be studied for these rings and shows that the inside edge of the ring has a faster speed than the outside edge of the rings. And so it can't be solid material. The inside is moving faster than the outside. And we have a uh, just set of individual particles orbiting the planet. But the uh, Voyager camera was directed to focus on the rings and change its pointing, its camera, to compensate for the motion of the spacecraft. The stars then became trailed objects as the spacecraft was not um, following the stars, not uh, trying to track the stars across the sky as the spacecraft was zipping by Uranus. So it, it photographed the ring system for us. And then Neptune, again, has been photographed by spacecraft with the rings that uh, are present here. Uh, less extensive rings than uh, we have. Saturn, of course, has the, uh, the strongest set of rings and the most particles. Um, and then Uranus has rings, Neptune, less rings, and even ring arcs. And then Jupiter also has rings, not an extensive ring system. But again, spacecraft, the Voyager here, uh, with the Sun, uh, on the far side of Jupiter, the Voyager's in kind of the shadow of Jupiter right now, but it could photograph ring material orbiting uh, the uh, the planet Jupiter. So you might have some questions. You should uh, you know, read materials again, read the reading guide that I provide to my students, and um, ask your instructor some questions that you might have about rings.